Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for the invitation here. I want to talk to you about two things this afternoon. First, I want to address the question that is often posed in relation to this assembly. Why shouldn't we simply have a vote on this issue? Why shouldn't we leave it to the majority to decide? I want to explain to you why, in the particular circumstances of Article 43.3 of the Constitution, doing this would be wrong. And then secondly, I want to consider what calls for repeal actually mean in relation to our culture. I hope to persuade you that the cultural change involved would be significant, highly regressive, and fundamentally unjust. First, why not have a referendum? In a democracy, in most areas of life, the majority is allowed to make the rules simply because it's the majority. Generally, the majority speaks through the will of its elected representatives. Occasionally, it speaks directly, as in a referendum. From time to time, a majority can be put together in favour of doing things to members of a vulnerable minority that that minority may not like. But because they're in the minority, they're usually powerless to prevent it. In more serious circumstances, however, if you are a member of a vulnerable minority, majority rule can feel like tyranny. What can a minority do? Its only hope against the will of the majority is to have resort to a legal device which is fundamentally anti-majoritarian. And we call that a fundamental right. We have fundamental rights in our constitution precisely because every now and then the majority may wish to do something to a minority that is quite simply wrong. It is wrong even though a majority may wish to do it. Where it breaches a fundamental human right in the constitution, this allows the vulnerable individual or minority to say stop even though you want to do this thing to me, you can't. And this is why the Eighth Amendment is part of our Constitution. Its purpose is to protect a vulnerable minority. It says that the Irish state acknowledges the right to life of the child before birth and commits the state to defending and vindicating that right. It also recognizes the equal right to life of the mother the Eighth Amendment acknowledges the equal value of each life and the importance of preserving both. It does not pit one against the other, but rather seeks a middle ground whereby the rights and needs and dignity of both are accommodated. In other words, it recognizes the common humanity of the mother and her unborn baby. The rights of both are protected. The majority can't legislate in any way that infringes the right to life of the unborn baby or her mother. And that is why the idea of holding a referendum to remove a fundamental human right from the Constitution is so wrong. It puts the power into the hands of the majority to vote away the only protection the vulnerable minority has from that same majority. I want to turn next to the issue of what Ireland would look like without the Eighth Amendment or Article 43.3. <coughs> Behind the glib exhortation repeal is a landscape with no restrictions on abortion, no term limits and no rights for the child in the womb. Repeal means repealing human rights. It means turning a blind eye to those who would discriminate against a baby just because she's a little girl, or because he has Down syndrome, or looking the other way when a healthy child's life is ended because she's not wanted. It means allowing a child to be punished for the criminal acts of her father. It means that a child whose natural life doctors guess at might be short can be condemned to die unnaturally despite the fact that it's the only life that baby will ever have. Children can't be blamed for the circumstances of their conception or their own ill health or the ill health of their mothers. 
Yet, you were being asked to propose a law that would have them pay the ultimate price, the sacrificing of their lives without trial, without a chance to object, in an environment that should be a place of protection, but where they have nowhere to run and where no one can hear their distress. Most people see the importance of establishing norms that value each life as equal and worthy of dignity because of the terrible injustices that can result when some are treated as less fully human than others. Repeal means surgeons killing defenseless infants for money and groups with friends in high places campaigning for the right to do so. Repeal means never discussing the rights of the child, nor the interests of the child, nor the gruesome deaths these little ones suffer as the reality of what each and every abortion entails. Repeal means that the unwanted child in the womb should be neither he heard, seen nor heard, except that sometimes one is. Last year in Poland, a 24-week-old baby boy with Down syndrome survived an abortion and was left alone, crying by himself for an hour before he died. There is a deafening silence among pro-choice advocates about cases like this despite the fact that they will properly argue for the humanity and rights of the murderer on death row, they have nothing to say about an innocent, disabled child being left to die without medical aid, without nourishment or comfort or help, not even a pair of arms to wrap him in a blanket and hold him and sing to him as he died. Repeal means adopting a culture where it's okay to abort a baby because he has a cleft palate. There were 11 such instances in the UK in 2015. Or because she has cystic fibrosis. There were 12 such instances in the UK in 2015. It means rejecting those who are seen as less than perfect and sends out a message that these people and their families are somehow worth less. Repeal means a culture where abortions are normalized. In 2015, 38% of abortions in the UK were repeat abortions. Repeal means carrying out abortions in Irish hospitals on viable babies who are healthy and kicking in the womb. Repeal means discriminating against disabled babies and abandoning our mothers, our sisters, our daughters and our friends to a procedure that ends the lives of their babies. Some will argue for a moderate position or what they might call a middle ground. But such a position is one in which some human beings must necessarily be treated as less deserving of the protection of the law than others. It turns a blind eye to the injustice of screening out those who are seen as less than perfect. It ignores the gory details of what happens in a good, free, safe, legal abortion. And it conceals the fact that in every country in the world where abortion was brought in on moderate grounds, it utterly changed the culture and practices of the people, such that, for instance, in the UK, there are over 200,000 abortions every year. So when we look at it carefully, the moderate position actually isn't that moderate at all, because either it denies that unborn babies are human beings, or else it says they are human beings, but we just don't care about discriminating against them or treating them less favorably in the law. In fact, it is a unique form of discrimination because they become the only human beings not protected by the law from having their lives taken by somebody else. Wanting a little abortion is not like trying to make a compromise on anything else. It means that some children will lose their lives, effectively condemned to death without trial, without a right of appeal, despite their innocence, at the hands of a trained surgeon or by chemical methods. How can a just society allow this? How can we ignore the plight of these vulnerable children before birth? The pro-choice lobby would do it by employing the oldest trick in the book for the oppression of a powerless minority, and that is to deny them the status of humanity. Because, of course, if they're not human beings, we can do whatever we please with them. And that is injustice of the most appalling variety. Our Irish constitution is a beacon of hope in a world that has become darkened by a trend that elevates choice over justice. Were you to recommend the repeal of the Eighth Amendment, 
our country would follow the well-worn path towards a culture where human life is cheapened, made dispensable, commoditized. We have a chance, you have a chance, to take a stand and value all human life, to defend a vulnerable minority that is under threat. Article 43.3 of the Constitution protects the lives of both mother and child. And if we can do this, if we can save and protect and value both lives, and we can, why wouldn't we? Thank you. Thank you.